Milestones Express. Welcome back to Milestones Museum. My name is David, and while the museum is still close to our visitors, we thought we'd introduce you to some more of our infamous mannequins and learn a little about some history along the way. That's right, it's time for another episode of Mannequins of Milestones. This little tank engine is called Woolmer and is actually on loan to Milestones from the National Railway Museum. It used to be based at Longmoor Military Railway, where soldiers during both World Wars were trained in the operation and construction of railways before being sent overseas. Now, this pair here are known as Elijah and Bert. Previous visitors to the museum may have overheard them pondering the future of coal as they go about unloading their cart. You see, our Bert is convinced the writing's on the wall for coal. He needn't have worried, though. Despite the rising popularity of gas and electric powered appliances throughout the 20th century, coal remained in widespread use long after the Victorian era, and not just in railway locomotives either. During the Industrial Revolution, steam power drove the vast majority of machinery across Britain. Of course, you can't create steam without heat, and at that time the best way to create heat was by burning coal. Coal was also the main source of domestic power, providing the heat each household needed to cook and stay warm. Yes, the Victorians burnt a lot of coal. No, really, a lot. You might think that burning so much fossil fuel would result in a large amount of air pollution, and you'd be absolutely right. Thick black fogs known as pea supers became common occurrences in large cities, and it wasn't until the Great Smog of London killed over 10,000 people in 1952 that laws were introduced to curb the burning of fossil fuels. All this being said, there is still plenty we can learn from our pasts when it comes to making positive environmental changes. Although our ancestors may have burnt the coal at both ends, they still came up with plenty of ingenious solutions to repair and reuse everyday items instead of throwing them away. Here in Kingdons, our Edwardian ironmonger, you can find all kinds of wares designed to prolong the life of household objects. Now, at that time, a pair of boots would have set you back the best part of a week's wages, so it was important to make them last as long as possible. These heel and toe protectors, which look a lot like a horseshoe, could be used to prevent the wooden soles from wearing too quickly. What's that? Hole in your bucket? Not a problem. Why not pick up some pot menders? This simple solution could cover over the cracks in a pot or pan and prevent it from leaking without the need of welding or adhesive. Here in our Edwardian cottage, you can find plenty of examples of energy saving too. With no household electricity supply, many of the jobs that we would use appliances for today had to be done using good old fashioned elbow grease. Whether that was drying your clothes, food processing, or just getting the dust out of your curtains. And the Edwardian family who lived here would have probably all washed using the same water in one of these tin baths. Four or five people using the same bath water? Now that's energy efficient. I wonder how they decided who went last. And how about this for the start of a rag rug? Why throw out your worn out old clothes when you can turn them into quite the fetching piece of interior decor instead? But if you really did want to throw something away, you probably just chuck it out the window. Believe it or not, but household waste bins weren't introduced into Britain until 1875. This meant that most people routinely threw their waste out of the window. Many people actually made a living as rag and bone men, sorting through the waste and collecting anything that might be of value to sell on. The name comes from the two things they collected most. Rags could be sold on to a wide variety of different manufacturing industries, whereas bones were regularly boiled down and made into glue. One thing a Victorian rag and bone man wouldn't have collected is plastic. Not being invented until the 20th century means the products sold in stores like this would have contained very few materials that couldn't be reused in some way. As for the food itself, Victorians were almost solely dependent on fresh local produce. Without fridges, freezers, and food being shipped halfway across the world, this would have drastically reduced everyone's carbon footprint. Luckily for Elijah and Bert, Hampshire was often referred to as the Strawberry Coast at that time, 
thanks to the large volume of high quality summer fruits produced in the region. In 1888, Swanwick Railway Station was purposefully built to transport strawberries from Hamble Valley through to the rest of the country. So, although Victorian life could be tough, it still had its sweet spots. Strawberry? Lads? No? Thanks for watching this episode of Mannequins of Milestones. We can't wait till we're able to open our doors and welcome back visitors once again. In the meantime, for more insight of Hampshire's culture and history, why not take a look at some of the other articles over at Culture On Call. Until next time, so long, Governor. <laughs>